All right, let's take a look at this example. I want us to use front end rounding to get an estimate for what the answer is, and then we're going to actually find the exact answer and kind of compare the two. So Susan receives a paycheck for $872. She then writes a check for $443 to her homeowners association. How much does she have left out of her paycheck? Of course, we know this is the time for you to be paying your homeowners dues if you live in a house, right? If you live in an apartment, don't worry about it. So when I look at these numbers, I'm trying to combine these two numbers, right? When I see the 872, is this a positive or a negative? We see a paycheck as a positive number, right? And I'm adding to that what kind of number? If you write a check, we know that this really means a negative 443. You guys with me on that? If I were to do an estimation here based on front end rounding, how would you estimate 872 if you round to the nearest hundreds? So that's about 900 plus, if I round this guy, what is he? It's 400, so we're going to make this a negative 400. Do you all agree? Now look at what I have here. I've got a positive 900 a negative 400 that I'm combining together because we have to pay attention to our signs. Remember how we talked about the absolute value when we talked about adding? Who's stronger here? Which one? The positive number is stronger in terms of the absolute value, right? So if I have a positive 900 and a negative 400, will I end up on the positive or negative side? Positive, positive side. So about positive what? It's about a positive 500. So if Susan is trying to figure out about how much money she has left, and she's using front end rounding, she might say she has about $500 left. Now, rounding is good to a point. Let's see what it is exactly. How would I figure out exactly how much she has? I'm going to subtract, right? <laughs> And I'm going to subtract because these guys have opposite signs. So 872 minus 443. 429. 420, you sure about that? Yep. Yep. Oh, she is. All right. So I've got to borrow this to make, borrow a 10 from there to make this a 12. So that's 9, 2, 4. So 429 is my exact answer. The estimate was, I guess I need to be careful here. We are talking about dollars here. So she actually has, she has $429 left over. So front end rounding was okay, but you still want to make sure that you are exact. We, we know that 429 is not, wouldn't round to 500, but it's in that general neighborhood, so we know that my answer is about right. Okay. What do you guys think about that? Uh, is this sometimes done in a bank? Is it what? Is it done in a bank sometimes in Toronto? You know, you know, you know exactly, yeah, exactly 429. No, no, the, the bank is going to be, bank is going to be exact. The only rounding that there may, that may happen is when you're talking about interest rates. And like even, even taxes, because the tax rate would be like eight and a quarter. So you're not going to pay one dollar and eight cents and a quarter of a penny. So you would round to the nearest penny, right? Which is why if the tax rate is like eight and a quarter, if you buy something off the dollar menu, it's better for you to go through the drive through twice. Because that'd be a dollar and eight cents and then a dollar and eight cents. That's two sixteen, right? Because if you go through and you get both of them at the same time, it'd be two seventeen. So save a penny, go through twice. <laughs> <laughs>